GitHub Copilot is one of the best AI tools for developers. This will allow you to generate code within your editor. It supports multiple editors. I'm using Visual Studio Code. You've probably used these other AI tools and they're pretty comparable in terms of the code that is generated, but Copilot is an extension within Visual Studio Code, so it'll give you code suggestions as you are typing. Compared to ChatGPT, where you have to manually copy and paste the thousands of lines of code you generated on the fly like that, it's just ridiculous that they would expect us to do that much work. GitHub Copilot will allow you to just hit tab on automatic suggestions that pop up. I was fortunate enough to qualify for GitHub Copilot for free. You may as well if you contribute to open source or are a teacher or student. To illustrate how this works, you'll be able to type slash slash and it'll give you suggestions on things that do, or you can start typing and it will continue to do the same thing. So for example, to create a function to reset the game state, and this will generate some code of what it might look like to reset my game's state. This is a function I could then call throughout my code to get things back to the start. To work with this, you're going to want to get the GitHub Copilot extension, and there's also this GitHub Copilot Labs extension, which I would also recommend. These do different things, and this one is actually really cool. I'll show you some of those features soon. There's also a third one here I wanted to mention, which is the GitHub Copilot Nightly, which may have new features that are not yet in GitHub Copilot, or maybe better suggestions or something like that. So you may want to do this one if you want to get the absolute latest. I also wanted to give a shout out to this blog, Eight Things You Didn't Know You Could Do With GitHub Copilot, which gave me some ideas for this video. So to go through some examples, I have a fresh C++ file. First one I wanted to show you is the ability to generate enums very easily, and I cannot type and talk at the same time, so we're just going to talk, uh, try my best here. So we'll say difficulty enum, and then to actually get the suggestion, you'll hit enter and give it a second, and then the suggestion will pop up. If you want the suggestion, you can hit tab. So if you're in the situation where you want to generate an enum, let's say for the states of the USA, you might get a different suggestion. In this case, it looks like it's trying to generate states for a game or, say, a state machine of some sort. And there may be a scenario where you want to cycle through different suggestions. Now, there may be key binding set up for this already, but what we can do is go to Keyboard Shortcuts and find editor.action.inline.suggest. And there's two in here, which is Show Next and Show Previous, where you can get the key bindings for that. So for me, that's option and the left and right square bracket. So if there are multiple options here, then we could go with option and then use the square brackets to generate different options here. Now it doesn't seem to understand the option for the states. So what I could just do is give it a little bit of a hint by saying enum states of USA, and then it should be able to generate that value. And I imagine you could cycle through this to get, say, the shortened versions of the states, which is exactly what it did. Additionally, there is a shortcut to manually cause the copilot pop-up to happen. So option slash in this example. So if we're there and it's not popping up, such as when we switch back to this page, we could just say option backslash, and there we get the enum again to pop up. If there's ever a suggestion you want, you just hit tab and it will put that in your code. Knowing that shortcut key will allow us to disable the pop-up if it's annoying. I tend to do this for videos, just I don't like pop-ups showing up as much as I would when I'm just generally coding myself. So editor inline suggest enabled, you could set this to false. And now you might not see that suggestion, but you can say option backslash and you'll see it pop up still. That's one of the settings you can set. I'm sure there are others as well, but I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to true for now. You don't have to do this with a comment. So for example, you could say US states and it'll just suggest that code in line, allowing you to easily finish that out. I'd say one of the more valuable use cases of AI code is for things like regular expressions or validating user input. Anything that requires specific knowledge of how the different inputs could look, that could be a little extra research and the chances are you might get it wrong but AI is a little bit smarter than you, so we can use Copilot to generate some regular expressions. So for example, regex to validate email. Let's see what this suggests. All right, tabbing through this, you can see we have one here. Now clearly this isn't perfect because it doesn't understand like, hey, I want this within a function. It just gives me like the regex string because that was just a bad user prompt. So now let's see if it does any better. And there we go. It looks like this one is a bit better. So I think it's 
quite challenging to force it to create something correctly on first try. Additionally, it's not going to do any imports or anything that you might need for your code. I think the real value is as you are coding, you're going to find pop-ups and things that you might use it for. Whereas in this video, I'm kind of coming up with contrived examples to show its use cases. I've noticed when I have had Copilot enabled and I'm just typing code like regular, it pops up with something and I'm like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. I hit tab and it just overall improves my development speed. I think this is why they brand it as basically pair programming, but with AI. I don't think it's designed to replace you coding. It's designed to basically amplify that coding experience and make things a little bit faster and hopefully bug free. I think another valuable use case is to generate starter code if you have some structure you want, you just don't wanna type it all out. Here's an example I thought of ahead of time. Let me read this to you. It's a class person having age, name, and email, and a function to validate the email, and a function to print the person's name and getters and setters, and operator overloading for output to the console and string comparison. Literally a ton of stuff. Let's see what it generates. And you can see here, this is one of the suggestions where it does pretty much everything we wanted it to do. So this would have taken me at least 12 hours to write out myself if I was working and getting paid by the hour. But this is pretty good, so let's go ahead and hit tab. And I mistakenly had this memory here from earlier code I was tinkering with. So there we go, we saved. It compiles good, no errors. Now you could easily work with this class. Let's take a moment to talk about the labs extension, which is really cool. A few things this thing can do is one, it can explain code, which is a game changer. If you're picking up some code base and you don't understand it very well, you can have the AI explain it and that's going to speed up your coding process. Additionally, you can take code and translate it to another programming language. This is beneficial if you want to switch to a new language or if you still can't understand the code and you wanna transform it to a language you do understand. So say you're picking up some C++ code base and you want to convert that to Python, which is generally pretty readable. This is going to be an extension that shows up over here on the side. Let's go ahead and go into the language translation and let's select this class here. So here is our selection and it's best if you just close out the other windows so you can see the full section. And we'll translate this to Python and see if it's able to do it. And there we go. It created a class person in Python. And you'll be able to compare to see if you understand things. If you're still not sure, you can go to this drop down here and have it explain it to you. So we'll go ahead and ask Copilot and see what it says. Yeah, and it does a fairly good job, I'd say, from the, all the different information it provides here. It's absolutely insane. Now, clearly you would be able to take this code and paste it in something like ChatGPT, but up until, you know, a few months ago, doing this kind of stuff just wasn't something I would consider doing. So AI tools have definitely made a big difference in my day-to-day -day work and allows me to code much faster and understand code much faster. So I highly recommend you try this out. There's also this section here, which I'll show you, but we're not gonna go through examples. This will do things like list out steps, document your code, fix bugs, and clean your code up as well. Let me know what other AI tools you've tried and you would like me to do a video on or give me suggestions how I can integrate this into my day better to get the most out of AI. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this content, please give this channel a subscribe. That really helps me out, lets me know you care, and it will help you get notified when I release new videos. If you enjoy learning to code and you'd like to learn C or C++, I have an upcoming C and C++ course, so check out the link down below to get added to the newsletter. That'll notify you when that comes out so you'll be ready to go. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next video.